Hi guys, in this video I will do something a bit different and more personal than my normal stuff. I want to share with you 10 big lessons I've learned in 10 years of running my marketing agency. I left my home country, the UK, in 2012 to pursue my dream of running a 100% remote marketing agency. Now in 2023, I have a small team of eight people. We did close to a million dollars in revenue last year. We serve clients across the world, helping them with their online advertising. And best of all, I get to do all this whilst living in my favorite city in the world, Bangkok. Of course, there were ups and downs along the way, and that's why today I want to share with you the big lessons I took from those ups and downs. Let's get into it. Number one on my list is that you should invest in the best. Your most valuable resource when you're running an agency is your people. You should be willing to pay more to get more when it comes to your core stuff. Trust me, this will be totally ROI positive in the long run. When you're thinking about hiring and you're thinking about what salary you can pay, don't think about how do I pay as little as possible and get as much as possible? No, think the opposite. Think how do I pay as much as possible but get someone who is totally worth paying that much and be prepared for it to hurt a little bit at first. You might not be used to hiring people and paying a solid salary but let me tell you your people are your most important resource so invest in this for your long-term business and agency success. Number two is to be conservative during the good times. Business is a roller coaster. There are going to be ups and downs. And when you're on one of those ups, don't think you are invincible and just splash your cash all over the place. There are going to be some downs around the corner. And during the up times, this is your time to actually save that excess cash, not spend it on wasteful things in your business or in your personal life. Instead, save it up and build your runway. In terms of your runway, I like to make sure I've got at least six months of expenses in the bank ready to go it's not doing anything it's easily accessible and that six month runway is actually enough to pay all the business expenses for six months even if all the clients left today like if we had no income i'd still be able to pay all my team all my business expenses for at least six months having that runway there and building that runway while you're in the good times is going to save you a lot of mental strain and heartache later down the line number three on my list is to get yourself out of the day-to-day -day as fast as possible now if you invest in the best like i mentioned previously this will happen faster for you as a business owner you cannot be stuck in the day-to-day -day grind you need to be able to look at the bigger picture so hiring out the day-to-day -day fulfillment and getting that off your plate as quickly as possible should be your number one priority when you're starting out and you're thinking about your first few hires because you need to have that bigger vision you need to be able to look for the opportunities and learn new things and turn those new learnings into new services or new ways of doing things for your clients that's how you grow your business and you can't do that if you're stuck in spreadsheets or stuck in the day-to-day 100% -day, of the day. Like, do maintain some of the day-to-day -day duties for yourself just to keep your skills sharp, but try and get into that bigger business owner mindset as soon as possible and you do that by hiring out the day-to-day -day stuff first before anything else. Number four on my list, you are your brand. In the early days of a marketing agency and for a good few years, you are the face of your brand and there is no hiding. So this is a good and a bad thing. I mean, it's bad and if you want to hide and you're shy to show yourself, you need to get out there and show yourself and just recognize the fact that your brand is your business brand. So invest in your personal brand as well as in your business brand and invest in yourself as well. So keep your skills sharp, learn new things, never stop learning. And also don't just learn things that are 100% relevant to your business, but branch out because you never know what that other thing that you're going to learn is that's going to benefit your business a lot. Like for me personally, I have spent a good few years learning meditation, mindfulness, stoic philosophy and Buddhist philosophy. I'm not a particularly religious person but learning the secular aspects of Buddhist philosophy and Stoic philosophy has taught me so much and I've brought that into my business and it's helped my business and 
That would never have happened if I didn't recognize the fact that I am my brand and that I need to invest in myself and that investing in myself is investing in the business. Number five on my list is to keep the end in mind. What I mean here is you need a long-term vision. You need to write it down and that's for yourself so you can look at it and make it solid and tangible. It's just all so much more real when you actually have it written down and it's a physical thing that you can see and you've committed to, but then also it makes it easier to share it with your team. Ultimately, your team is there to help you achieve that long-term vision for your business and by extension, your life. So write it down, solidify it, share it with your team so that you can get everyone behind that idea. If you don't know what your future vision looks like, then how can you possibly plan for what to do this quarter, this week, or even today? You need that future vision. And if you need help with a process for this, you could go over to businessmadesimple.com. That's the process I used. I think it's about 300 bucks to sign up. And I actually signed up with them and I went through their full process. You don't have to use them specifically, but just having a predefined process for long-term visioning can help a lot. What they did in Business Made Simple uh, that I think a lot of these processes do is they start with the end in mind by getting you to write down something like, uh, in this case, in, with Business Made Simple, they got us to write down our obituary as the first thing we did. Sounds a little bit morbid, but it gets you thinking in the right direction. What you do is you write down what you want people to say about you after you have died. And then that really gets you thinking about having the end in mind. From there, you work backwards to your 10-year vision, your five-year vision, your three-year vision, and you, you eventually are gonna work back to what you need to do today, but it all starts with having the end in mind. So if you need a process, go out there and find one, uh, but you don't have to buy or use one of these predefined processes. Ultimately, the idea is that you want to start at the future write down what that looks like and then slowly work your way back to today. Next on my list and very related to the previous point is do quarterly goal setting. Do this with your team. I love using OKRs, that stands for objectives and key results. There are other goal setting frameworks out there like smart goals or rocks. Do what works for you, maybe read up on a few of the frameworks, pick one that kind of you vibe with and just roll with it. And remember that it won't be perfect at first, but progress is better than perfect. Well, the first time you do this, it's going to start out rough, but don't worry about that. Just start and then your goal is to make it better every single quarter. Do it every single quarter. It took us about two years to really hit our stride with quarterly goal setting using the OKR framework. But the important thing was it got better each time we did it. And now I think we feel super comfortable with our quarterly goal setting process. We've got like templates in place. We know exactly how we go about it. Like at the end of the quarter, we review how we did the previous quarter, then set goals for the next quarter, always paying attention when we're setting those quarterly goals to what the long-term vision looks like. You don't have to do it exactly the way I do it, but I think it is important to have some sort of quarterly goal setting framework. Use it with your team if you have a team. If you're still in the solo founder phase, then still use a quarterly goal setting framework. Just do it with yourself and you will benefit from it a lot, I promise. Next on my list is to find new cheese. Uh, this comes from the book, Who Moved My Cheese? I don't know if you've read it, but if you haven't read it, the general idea is that whatever cheese you're eating right now, whatever way you're profiting in business right now, it works today and it might work for a good long time into the future, but it probably won't work forever. And your job as the founder is to always be on the lookout for those new opportunities, those new pieces of cheese. Don't become complacent. This is another way we tie into that concept of there's always gonna be ups and downs in business. During the ups, not only should you be saving your cash for your runway to prepare for those down days, but you should also be looking for the new cheese. Keep one eye open on the wider market. Be Learning, be looking for those new opportunities, new ways to serve your clients, new services you can add, because you never know when in the future will your current cheese start to dry up, start to disappear. So you need to be prepared for that and you prepare for that by always being on the lookout for the next piece of cheese, the next opportunity that you can capitalize on and serve your customers or clients with. Number eight on my list is that your network will take you so far. I mean two things by this. I mean that it will take you so far. 
it, it will get you a long way. But I also mean that it will only take you so far. Like it will get you a certain way, but then you're going to need something else if you want to continue growing the business. So your network will take you so far. It will take you a long way. At the beginning of your journey, your first source of leads and clients is going to be from your personal network. So tell all your friends what you do, what you're up to, be proud about it, share it on social media, and just don't be shy to get your face out there. At the same time, you want to be expanding your network in the right direction. I love conferences and business groups and online communities for this. In fact, my favorite thing, my favorite way to expand my network is to have premium paid for business communities. Think an online forum that you actually have to pay for because I, I think paying for the community is important. It keeps out the riffraff. I've seen a lot of free communities and they just become like total spam. People just constantly spamming their message about mm, work with me, here's why I'm great. But the premium business communities, when you can find one, the one that's good, there's a lot of value in there and there's a lot of other high level business owners that you can network with, that you can make friends with. And my favorite type of community is one that has an online component and an offline component. You can only do so much with online networking. And my favorite communities will have like an online forum and uh, they have an annual conference as well. So you can spend the year helping people out on the online forum, getting advice yourself, making new friends online. But then importantly, there's at least one conference per year. So you can go and then put names to faces and you know have a coffee or a beer or a lunch with all, all the people you've met online, uh, whatever your jam is. And then that really kind of solidifies the relationship and, and makes it real. And I've like profited and benefited in so many ways, not just in getting clients, but also in getting advice from my business and just being able to freely share my rants and woes and problems and get ideas on my challenges as well. There's so much value to be had from these communities and just from generally building your network. Number nine on my list is to give away generously. I remember back in the old days when I started out, I actually started as a freelancer on Upwork or actually back then it was called Odesk. So yes, this was quite a while ago. But back on Odesk, I would do jobs for free or for very cheap because at the beginning I recognized the fact that my real goal here is not to make money straight away, it's to build my profile, it's to build up my reviews. Now back then I was trying to build a profile on Odesk, I wanted positive reviews, I wanted five star reviews, so I just made sure to do a really good job for all those cheap and free clients I was serving just so I'd get that review and I'd make sure to ask for that review if I thought I had done a good job. Now, in 2023, you might not be starting out on o Upwork or Odesk, you might not be starting out on a platform like that, but however you are starting out, I think the advice still holds true to this day, which is at the beginning, getting reviews, testimonials, getting your name out there, solving business problems for your clients, all of that, getting experience under your belt is so much more important than making money straight away. So invest in that, be willing to give away generously and for free. Another thing that I do is in those communities that I like to join and with my sort of business network, I like to give away my time and advice for free. I'll often just jump on a one hour call with another business owner. If they're struggling, if, if I know them from the community and they're struggling with something that I think I can help with, I'm happy to just jump on the call and help them with that. Give them my time for free if I think I can be of use to them. And I don't necessarily expect any direct things in return. I kind of believe in the idea of business karma. You do this enough and what goes around comes around and it does eventually eventually evolve into more people knowing about your business and eventually customers and sales. And me personally, I just kind of find it fun to do. It's one of the reasons I like being in business. I like helping other business owners solve their problems and grow their business. And that brings me on to my final point. Find what's fun. If you don't have fun doing what you do, you are going to burn out. And let me tell you, running a business or running a small agency is a marathon, it's not a sprint. So be prepared for the marathon. Find aspects of the job that you just love to do and could do all day long and focus on those and then hire out all the icky things that just need to get done but you don't necessarily enjoy doing it. As a business owner, your mental bandwidth and your resource and the energy that you can bring to the business is hugely important and a huge asset. So the more you can do to get the icky things off your plate and focus on the things that you personally enjoy doing, 
the better and your business will thank you for it. For me, I love solving problems and coming up with ideas and sharing those ideas with others. And that's why I launched this YouTube channel. It's a way for me to share my ideas, help business owners and solve problems in a unique way. And also I get to promote my business at the same time. What's not to love about that? So the thing that you find fun is not going to be the same as what I find fun, but the general concept is find the fun in your business and focus on that. I hope you've enjoyed this more personal look at what I do. If you've got any questions or comments, then please do drop them in the comments section below and I will be sure to get back to you. 